Hello everyone. Uh, today uh, we are going to deal another small topic that is uh, cross bites, uh, which is important for your uh, daily practice as well as uh, for your exam point of view. So in that, I'll be talk, dealing with the definition, etiology, classifications, how, what are the clinical features, what is the diagnosis and the management. So coming to the definition, what do you mean by a crossbite? So a crossbite is a condition where one or more teeth, which may be abnormally malposed, uh, either buccally or lingually or labially, with reference to the opposing tooth. Means either it can be labially placed, or it can be lingually placed, or it can be buccally placed. Okay. Uh, which is abnormally placed, I'm saying, which is abnormally placed. So crossbite is a condition where one or more teeth that, that may be abnormally malposed. Buccally or lingually or labially with reference to the opposing teeth. So coming to the etiology of uh, crossbites, I have just uh, compiled all the etiology under <clears throat> in a table, tabular format. Okay. So coming to the etiology of uh, crossbites. So etiology of crossbites, uh, uh, there are basically, there are two types of crossbites. One can be an anterior crossbite and another can be a posterior crossbite. So uh, coming to the dental causes of anterior crossbite okay so either it can be a traumatic injury to the primary dentition that caused lingual displacement of the permanent uh, tooth but in your traumatic injury you might have uh, uh, you know uh, heard about intrusion when a child is falling down and the teeth is going inside and imagine that uh, your uh, upper central incisor's position is changed it has pushed lingually so what happens it will erupt on a deflected way of path of eruption so the persistence, uh, persistence of this tooth will be there and a palatal deflection of its erupting successors also will be there. So that will lead to a condition called as single tooth crossbite. Means you might have seen only one tooth is behind the uh, or palatally placed uh, one tooth will be there. So that is one cause. Second cause is supernumerary tooth. Imagine there's a supernumerary tooth in the path of eruption of the central incisors. So obviously what happens? The incisors will deflect the path and erupt down. A, a habit of lip biting or uh, <coughs> lip biting of upper lip. Upper lip biting is there. Then in cases of cleft lip palate repair cases. Then if there is a case of arch inadequacy, means imagine a constricted arch and you don't have any place for the tooth to erupt. So what will happen? It has to come behind. So arch length inadequacy causing lingual deflection of the permanent tooth during the eruption. So these are the dental causes of anterior crossbite. Now, going to the skeletal causes of anterior crossbites. First we'll deal with the anterior crossbite, then we'll go to the posterior crossbites, okay? So uh, in anterior crossbite coming to the skeletal causes, it can be genetic, okay? or due to the deficiency of uh, anterior growth of the maxilla, imagine the maxillary growth is less and the mandibular growth is more. So the you can you might have seen, uh, you know, uh, a person with a long chin, chin is going ahead, okay? So because of the deficiency of anterior growth of the maxilla or an excessive growth of the mandible. It can be in two ways or it can be the combination of both. So it, either it can be genetic or deficiency of anterior growth of the maxilla or excessive growth of the mandibular growth or the combination of second and the third condition. Next is the functional crossbite. Okay. Or you can see a pseudo class three crossbite. That is because of the habitual forward positioning of the mandible. Means imagine that the central incisors are early, uh, at a very early age, the child has lost the central incisors. What happens to get and attain an occlusion? What, will, what he'll do? He'll be keep, take them, he'll take the mandible forward. Okay, so the habitual forward positioning of the mandible to obtain maximum intercuspation, which may lead to the anterior crossbite. So that is called as a functional crossbite. Means because to perform the function, he has taken the mandible forward, and so that that is how that crossbite is developed. So these are the etiology of anterior crossbite. Now coming to the etiology of posterior crossbite. Posterior crossbite, the simple thing, prolonged retention of uh, primary tooth. So if there's a prolonged retention of, then I'm just talking about the dental causes. If there's a prolonged retention of the primary tooth, then automatically there will be deflection of the 
uh, posterior tooth and uh, that will <coughs> that will erupt lingually or uh, uh, you know palatally then uh, ectopic eruption of the permanent first molar prolonged thumb sucking habit of course uh, if because of the thumb sucking habit you guys have you get you guys, you guys know that there will be constriction of the maxillary arch so if there's a constriction of the maxillary arch obviously the poster will be leading to a posterior cross bite then the cleft lip palate cases so these are the dental causes of posterior cross bite now next is the skeletal causes again it is genetic that is one thing then due to the deficient lateral growth of the maxilla in that uh, first uh, in the anterior cross bite it is the anterior growth of the maxilla but as in posterior cross bite the lateral growth both the sides if it is not growing properly so in cases of cleft lip palate cases there will be decreased uh, stimulation of uh, mid palatal suture so there will be decreased maxillary growth so most probably the chances of uh, you know the lateral deficiency growth of the maxilla will be most commonly seen in uh, uh, cleft lip palate cases then excessive abnormal mandibular uh, mandibular growth laterally means again the mandible is growing laterally more or if the combination of the two things functional cross bites in that unilateral cross bite due to the occlusal interferences imagine that uh, you know uh, canine prominence is more okay so in order to avoid that he is deviating the jaw to one side and then bite so uh, due to the occlusal interferences deviation of the mandibular jaw during, during the closure the, during the closure you can see the mandible uh, you know to to relieve the occlusal interferences he'll try to shift the mandible so these are the etiology of posterior cross bites now how do you classify cross bites so based on the location you can classify it as anterior cross bite and posterior cross bite according to the number of teeth involved in anterior cross bite it can be single tooth or segmental cross bite so the anterior cross bite is done there now according to the number of tooth involved it uh, in the posterior cross bite it can be either single tooth cross bite or segmental cross bite according to the side involved it can be unilateral or bilateral and according to the extent it can be single postural cross bite buccal non occlusion or lingual non occlusion type of cross bite then based on the etiological factors cross bites can be classified into under three headings that is either skeletal cross bite or a dental cross bite or a functional cross bite now coming to the clinical features of uh, anterior and posterior cross bites an abnormal a uh, labial lingual relationship or a reverse overjet you can see here it's a reverse overjet means your maxillary arch will be inside and the mandibular arch will be outside or mandibular teeth will be outside and the max maxillary teeth will be inside so that that is called as an anterior cross bite so any abnormal labial lingual relationship between one or more maxillary or mandibular teeth is an anterior cross bite or you can say it's as a reverse overjet whereas in posterior cross bite you can see here this is a posterior cross bite here it again this is a posterior cross bite here an abnormal bicolingual relationship of teeth in in the maxilla and mandible when two dental arches are brought into centric occlusion means imagine that the two upper and lower arches in centric occlusion but there will be an ab abnormal bicolingual relationship of the teeth in the maxilla and mandibular arches will be there that is called, that's, that's what is called as a posterior cross bite is now coming to single what do you mean by single tooth cross bite and what do you mean by segmental cross bite single tooth cross bite you can see very well only one tooth is there in cross bite only one particular tooth is there in cross bite okay that's called as a single tooth cross bite a segment means you can see the entire anterior segment is there in cross bite now coming to the unilateral cross bite and the bilateral cross bite you can see unilateral cross bite means you can see here only in this particular area okay in this particular area there is a cross bite present when you see the other part of the occlusion it is perfectly fine so unilateral means it's only involving the involving an arch of a site or an involving the side of an arch one side of the arch will be completely involved bilateral means you can see this is a diagram this is a diagram you can uh, appreciate okay uh, you can see here only here there is a cross bite okay whereas here on both the tooth are in cross bite so, that is bilateral cross bite 
Then simple posterior cross bite, seen most frequently in clinical practice. The bite cusp of one or more maxillary posterior tooth occlude linkedly to the buccal cusp of mandibular teeth. So this is most commonly seen. This is the most commonly seen type of simple posterior cross bites. Then next is the buccal non-occlusion or you can say scissor bite. You would have heard about scissor bite where the upper arch is outside and the lingual, uh, you know, uh, lower arch or the mandibular arch is inside. So the maxillary posterior teeth occlude entirely on the buccal aspect of the mandibular posterior teeth. Okay. The maxillary posterior teeth occlude entirely on the buccal aspect of the buccal aspect of the mandibular posterior. That's called as buccal non-occlusion. And palatal or lingual non-occlusion means the maxillary posterior teeth occlude entirely on the lingual aspect of the mandibular posterior teeth. So it's just, uh, you know, uh, either on the buccal aspect or the lingual aspect, that's all. Okay, so that is called as palatal or lingual non-occlusion. Now coming to the skeletal cross bites. Skeletal cross bites is because of the discrepancy in the size of the maxilla or mandible. Okay, I've, again, I've told you skeletal cross bites are if there is a discrepancy in the upper arch, upper maxillary, maxilla jaw is less, lower maxillary jaw is excess. Okay, so that is how the skeletal discrepancy comes. So the mainly causes are it's either inherited or the defective embryological development. So this, this can be the causes of uh, skeletal cross bites. So anterior cross bite due to the maxillary retrognathism means uh, here if maxilla is not able to grow properly and mandible is growing in a normal pace. So that's called as maxillary re retrognathism. Then anterior cross bite due to the mandible retrognathism. Imagine the maxilla is growing properly, but the growth of the mandible, anterior growth of the mandible is much more. So the mandible is growing much faster rate. And anterior cross bite due to the uh, maxillary retrognathism and mandibular prognathism. That's a combination. Means uh, this is growing less and this is growing more. So that, that are the three conditions where you can develop a skeletal cross bite. Then the dental cross bites, the causes of dental cross bites, which we have already discussed uh, in detail. And functional cross bites also we have already discussed in detail. So coming to the diagnosis. So diagnosis first you need to take an history and see whether to have to take an history and see whether it is because of a skeletal deficiency the person has developed a cross bite or it's because of the uh, you know dental uh, problem the person has developed a cross bite. So history from how long he's seeing whether the new tooth has developed and he has developed a cross bite. All those things you need to ask. Then you have to examine clinically whether it is whether it's a skeletal cross bite or a dental cross bite, and you have to do a model analysis uh, to evaluate whether you have having sufficient space to accommodate the tooth in the arch. You need to gain the space, or you need to expand, and all those things you need to get into. For that, you will require a uh, model analysis, and uh, you need to take a radiograph uh, in case of anterior cross bites to check whether it's a skeletal cross bite or not. Because here you can see the maxilla is much, uh, you know, much behind or the retrognathic maxilla is there. So it's a, a, a skeletal cross bite. It's a high, it shows a skeletal cross bite here. And a peer view for, of the cephalogram for the posterior cross bite. So these are the diagnosis part you need to take into consideration uh, when you are doing a, um, when you are uh, dealing with the cross bite cases. Now management of cross bites. It's in mainly four stages. First is in the primary dentition stage. Second is in the mixed dentition stage. Third is in the permanent dentition stage. And in the post-permanent dentition stage. So in primary dentition, elimination of the cause or elimination of the factor that may lead to the anterior cross bite. Imagine if there is any occlusion, uh, prematurities are there, you have to remove that. Uh, okay. Then extraction of any supernumerary tooth before they cause displacement of the teeth. And if there is an high habit, you have to intercept the habit. So that comes under the preventive orthodontics. In mixed dentition, it's an interceptive orthodontics. In pre-adolescent age group, the cross bites should be treated at an, at an early age because what happens is if the cross bite 
present in the deciduous dentition, it may manifest in the mixed dentition as well as in the permanent dentition also. So it has to be treated at the earliest. So uh, if it's a simple crossbite, uh, do not treat at the early age because uh, sometimes if the teeth is erupting, it might it might get corrected. So it may progress into a skeletal malocclusion at a later and need complicated orthodontic treatment or a surgical treatment. Then comes your management. Okay, so the first thing is your tongue blade therapy, or that is the main indication is used when the crossbite is seen at a at the time of permanent dentition. Okay, when the, at the time of permanent tooth are making an appearance in the oral cavity, you can see your uh, teeth is just erupting, and you know that that's going for a crossbite. So in such cases, you can give or you can instruct the parents to go for a tongue blade therapy. So it is placed inside the mouth, contacting the palatal aspect of the maxillary teeth. So you can see here, it's just, it's, it's just a liver mechanism. Okay, So the palatal aspect of the maxillary teeth and on the slight closure of the jaw, the opposing side of the stick comes in contact with the labial aspect of the opposing. So when, when, the, when you ask the child to a little bit close the mouth, so what happens? This part will be in contact with the lower teeth. Okay, so this will act as a fulcrum. Okay, the mandibular tooth acts as a fulcrum. So automatically, there will be a little bit of force on the maxillary teeth and the teeth will come forward. So it is continued for one to two hours for about two weeks. So the drawbacks is only effective till the clinical crown <coughs> not completely erupted in the oral cavity. If it is an established crossbite, if it is a developing crossbite, this is fine. If it is an established crossbite, you won't get much benefit out of it. Then used only if sufficient space is available in, for correction and patient cooperation is literally needed. He, he has to bite and sit. Okay, patient has to bite and sit. Otherwise, there's of no use. So next is the Catlin's appliance or lower anterior inclined plane. Okay, so this, this you guys will you would have made uh, in your preclinical. Okay, so used only in those cases where the crossbite is due to the palatally placed maxillary incisors. Means the in maxillary incisors are palatally placed. Okay, so that uh, in uh, the, I have shown a picture as of single tooth crossbite. So such cases, okay, you can go for a Catlin's appliance. So constructed at a 45 degree angulation, you can see here, there's a 45 degree angulation here and the lower anterior by acrylic or cast metal. And one more thing I want to tell you, this is done only if the lower permanent incisors are erupted. You cannot do it in the primary incisors. And the disadvantages of Catlin's appliance, Again, Catlin's appliance is a fixed appliance. You, it's not a removable one. So difficulty in speech and swallow will be there because your bite is getting raised. Okay. Then patient cooperation is required, frequent re-cementation because sometimes uh, it will be difficult for the child to wear for a longer time. So you might, you know, it might dislodge. So again, you have to re-cement it. So Catlin's appliance uh, uh, <clears throat> also as an anterior bite plane can be given to, to the prevent the posterior teeth from coming into contact. So if prolonged use, what happens? Because you, it, you cannot, uh, you know, use this appliance for a longer time. So if it's prolongedly used, supra eruption of the posterior teeth will happen. So finally, instead of correcting the cross bite, it will end up in an anterior open bite. So cannot be given if the mandibular incisors are malaligned. Again, mandibular incisors are periodontally compromised. No, you're not supposed to give this appliance. Then, Next is the double cantilevers or a Z-spring appliance. Okay, so indication when when the maxillary anterior crossbite used in a maxillary anterior crossbite using one or two maxillary teeth is in crossbite. Imagine maxillary both centrals are in crossbite and it's a dental crossbite. You can give a Z-spring appliance with the posterior bite plane. So disadvantages effective only when there is enough space for the alignment of the teeth. Otherwise, it's not going to come back. Next is a screw appliance. So they can use micro, mini, or medium screw, or a three dimensional 3D uh, screw can be used. You can see here, it's a small screw has been placed there. So what happens is once you activate the screw, automatically the tooth will start moving towards the activated side. And one more thing, for all these appliance, one thing is that you have to raise the bite because the tooth will tooth movement will happen only if the bite is raised. So you have to see that is mandatory. Cross bites correction means you have to raise the bite. 
or you have to give a byte claim. So till now I was talking about uh, you know correction of the dental cross bites. Now comes the correction of skeletal cross bite. You can see very well in that it's a picture itself says okay the child's uh, mid face is literally gone in. Okay, so you have to go for an orthopedic appliance. Okay, so uh, for the correction of uh, uh, anterior cross bite, imagine that it's a skeletal cross bite. So indicated to correct the skeletal anterior cross bite due to the actual skeletal deficiency of the maxilla. So what you can do is you can give a protraction face mask or a reverse headgear. So it will allow, uh, and uh, if the maxilla is narrow, automatically you need to expand the maxilla. How you can expand, I, I hope you guys are familiar with the term RME, that is rapid maxillary expansion. Uh, RME screw also used for the transverse expansion, means you can literally expand the maxilla and get the maxilla forward. You can give, you can go for a frankel tree appliance, uh, then chin cap therapy. If the maxilla is proper and the mandible, you the, the anterior growth of the mandible is more, so then you can go for a chin cap therapy used to correct or prevent the anterior cross bite due to the prominent mandible. And the chin cap appliance uh, rotate the mandible backwards and downwards. Then in permanent dentition, you can use all these things. The mini screws, medium screws, all those things can be used. And fix a therapy, of course, you know, uh, used to correct the multiple, uh, correct the single tooth or a multiple tooth cross bite in the permanent dentition. So in post-permanent dentition, what I say is in surgical correction. Imagine that the active growth is completed and the child is coming to you or patient is coming to you saying that my bite is like this. So you have to go for a surgical orthodontic therapy. Then coming to the management of posterior cross bites. I, you can use uh, cross bite uh, cross bite elastics. Indication for the single tooth cross bite involving the uh, molars can be treated uh, with elastics. You can see here the lingual side of the upper molar and the buccal side of the lower molar has been connected. Okay, so elastic is stretched between the maxillary palatal surface of the and the mandibular buccal surface. Worn day and night, and the treatment should not be discontinued. Should not be continued for more than a week because the elastic can extrude the teeth. So that is the one thing. Next is the coffin spring or an omega loop. So omega shaped wire wire planes is uh, uh, you know capable of correcting the cross bites in a young developing dentition. So expansion, a slow expansion or a bilateral expansion is achievable in this particular type of appliance. And your cord helix, uh, you guys would have familiar about this. So it's a very narrow arch, so you can expand the arch with the help of a cord helix. A spring that consists of four helix, okay? Uh, uh, the being soldered at the molar bands that are cemented generally on the first molars. You can see here, it's been, uh, you know, soldered there. Then the capable of uh, dental alveolar expansion of the molars as well as the premolar region. So if you open these four coils, the molar and the premolar region, you can get a dento alveolar expansion. It can be activated by three prone pliers uh, without having without having a having it be removed. Then if it is a highly narrow arch, you can go for a rapid maxillary expander. Then uh, you can another thing is a night eye expander. That is again a you know night eye wire that has been bent and kept there. So what happens? The property of the night eye is it will uh, you know expand by itself or it will regain the shape by itself. So it, uh, it either the ideally the night eye expanders are given in the cleft lip palate cases. Then next is a fixed orthodontic therapy for correction of the posterior cross bites. So these are about this. I just uh, you know I'm just talking about the management of posterior cross bites. So in this particular thing, I have just uh, included the anterior and the posterior cross bites. What are the indication, what are the etiology and what are the management techniques of cross bites. And again, it's a short note question. So please, uh, you know, make notes of yourself and study.